Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Let's see what's on the bench this week. In last week's update, we got the warp engine nacelle test done. It's still sitting here getting some testing done, but we are going to move even more forward with lighting and lighting preparation this week. I would love to see if we could get some more lighting in, maybe some lighting in the warp nacelles permanently installed. Let's see if we can get those pylons refined and installed onto the ship and uh, see some real progress happen. Let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. First thing I'm going to do on the kit this week is to get work done on refining these pylons and getting them ready to install on the ship. Now I've got the two exact same pylons from ship A and ship B just to show you something here. There is a little bit of work that you want to make sure that you do before the pylons are installed into the secondary hull and that has to do with the join area here at the front of the nacelle. This is supposed to come down and nicely and seamlessly join the secondary hull right along that line where the pendant is where we've sanded down the uh, panel that doesn't belong there. Now the way it comes with the kit is it's quite rounded, it's quite a rounded nub there at the front and what you're going to run into is when you install this into the secondary hull you're going to have to deal with filling that afterwards or trying to sand that down with it attached to the part. That's what I did the last time around I built this model and it just gave me too much extra work to deal with. So what I'm doing this time around and I do recommend is that you sand this, file it and sand it down before the part goes on to the model. So you can see how this comes to a nice fairly sharp point here. That's going to reduce the workload once I get to assembling this with the secondary hull and dealing with seams because all that work of getting that blended is mostly done. Whereas if you install this piece to the secondary hull, you get then either got to fill that to make it go down nicely or you have to try to sand it down, file it down while it's attached to the secondary hull and you're just looking at doing damage to the secondary hull by needing to do it that way. So I highly recommend that you deal with this before you assemble your secondary hull. Now I will have to deal with this nub back here and that's going to be more an issue of having to fill it once it's attached because I have to actually extend it to reach the back end of the secondary hull here. These are bad fits to start with going into the secondary hull and you'll always see a gap when you get it installed and you're going to have to fill it but at least when you are uh, dealing with this ahead of time you reduce that workload down and it'll go much smoother. Both pylons for one of the ships has the initial putty work done along this seam. I've also slimmed this down so that it joins nice and flushly to the secondary hull and I've also done a little bit of work on the leading and trailing edges of each of the pylons. Now I'm not quite sure how much more refinement is going to be necessary until I get some gray primer on this but that's not going to happen until they are joined to the secondary hull which I have here. So the pylons are pretty much ready to join to the secondary hull so that we can start getting the warp engines onto the pylons. But before I do that, I want to get the deflector housing in place. Now I've already taken some uh, sort of diffused material plastic here to put on where the deflector piece will actually go. And it looks like it might be a little bit loose, so I have to do a little bit more work on that, securing that in place. But this is going to go in and I've had to, for this aftermarket part, I've had to uh, adjust these supports in here, take about some of the material out of there so that this will fit in properly. And there's gonna be a lot of putty work to do on this because as you may have seen when I was doing static build with this part, uh, there are some major gaps in here. So we'll have to deal with filling that. In fact, if I turn this over and you look in through there, you can really see those gaps uh, quite nicely in there. So we will have to deal with those. Now I am going to, oh, that's actually coming completely off. I'm going to have to figure out another way of getting that uh, secured onto there. Now we're going to get a five millimeter uh, smart LED for our amber light in there. So I'm going to rig up probably the same sort of 
uh, lighting system I did for the last Enterprise E that was done. And I will have to go back through my archives just to see exactly how I did that because it turned out really nicely. We do have an aftermarket part that goes along with this aftermarket uh, housing. That is the deflector dish. We will probably use that, but that will not need to be installed on there till much later down the road. We will just kind of have the blank uh, translucent uh, kind of material for now, and it'll just be kind of like a blank, somewhat clear piece that's in there. Some lighting progress to show you. We have all four clusters of Bizarre Collectors completely wired up. These are ready to be installed in the ship. So we have um, two that are wired up for the port side of the ship, like this one here. And we have two that are wired up for the starboard of the ship. And the reason is that the um, fluctuation of the lighting is a little bit different on each side. The pattern is technically the same because it's getting the exact same uh, pattern from the data wire, but um, by moving around where those LEDs are located, we should get a slightly different pattern when they are inside the Buzard collectors on the actual kit parts. We also have a yellow light going on here. It's been sitting for many, many hours now doing a test run. Uh, that is for the deflector dish. Now the deflector dish has some yellow tape on it. That's not for lighting or coloring or anything like that. That's simply paint mask. So don't worry about that on there. We now have a piece of white styrene on the back and that's going to help us with our light blocking. I've shaved down the end of this LED flat and slightly angled and I'm not going to, I'm not going to even try to get the angle the way I want it right now, but it's going to go on the back there and we're going to get a really nice yellow glow on that deflector. Uh, that's just shorting out because the wires are literally just shoved into the breadboard here. Uh, all of these wires have uh, leads uh, from LEDs soldered onto the ends of the wires so that they can go into the breadboard better for testing. These are just the bare wires. So um, if they short out, that is why there's nothing wrong with the LED. So that'll go in there like this, and then we will uh, encase the back of the LED for light blocking purposes, and this will work out very well for giving us that nice, bright yellow glow on the deflector dish without leaking any yellow light back into the ship. So I'm going to get ready to uh, get this light installed into the part and everything light blocked so that we can get this into the secondary hull. The LED for the deflector dish is now installed onto the deflector housing. You can see that it's doing that nice bright yellow. Um, the way we've got this set up is that we have the LED shaved down and it is secured in place into a hole cut into this white styrene piece that is covering the diffusion layer in there. And then we've got our tape just for paint masking. It's been wrapped in shrink tube to help with the light blocking situation. Um, clearly, it's not doing a full light blocking job. What I might do is just go back through and put a layer of black on here. That's probably the easiest way for me to deal with all this extra light. And then I will do a layer of probably black tulip around the edge just to keep the yellow light from getting into that secondary hull. But this is uh, nice and solidly uh, installed now and uh, is working like a charm. I put the leads, if I take this out, it's not going to turn the light off, that's the data cable, but these are the uh, leads that I was talking about. There are the pins that are on the LEDs that I have to cut off in order for them, for them to fit. And so instead of just chucking the pieces that are discarded, I have a whole little cup of them here. And I'm using those on the ends of the wires just so it's a lot easier to then stick the wire into the breadboard because I was getting it shorting out and doing really weird things when I was just trying to shove the wire itself into here. But here we go, it's looking good and I'm happy with that. And this could actually be any color that we want it to be. It's yellow on the ship, so that's what it's going to be. But because it's a smart LED, um, depending on how the sketch for the Arduino is programmed, you could make it any color. And say if you wanted to have some fun, you could put the ship maybe into, say, Borg Invasion mode where all the lights, including the deflector dish, go green. That's something that you could definitely do with having the programmable, addressable LEDs 
using the Arduino. It's just a matter of what coding you have on the software side of the unit, which is beyond my understanding and abilities to do. That's why I have Danny, who is doing all of the programming for me. We've gone ahead and done light blocking in behind. So I added the black shrink tube over top and then I used the black tulip paint all around and uh, it's done a pretty good job. There's just a couple of light leak areas there and actually that could go right into the ship without causing any issues with yellow light leak into the secondary hall. But because I'm a perfectionist, I'm going to touch up those little areas. Deflector housing has now been installed into the secondary hall and I just want to show you the kind of gaps that we're seeing. So hopefully in camera here you can see the gaps that we are seeing. If I put a little bit of white material behind you should start to be able to see what kind of seam gaps are there. So we're gonna to have to deal with those but I want to get the pylons and the cells attached so that we can do all of that seam work at the same time. But since I've got this here ready to show you, I've got the wires just coming out of where the post is going to be for the moment. I can get these plugged in and let's see, this is the data. This is the positive. Um, the data is very long so that it can go to the control board to the Arduino through the post. Um, this one is actually a data wire that's going to be going up to the impulse engines because we're going to be running those on the same uh, circuit. The d dish will be number one in the line and the impulse engines will be two and three in the lineup. So let's put this into the data and there it is. It's glowing inside the hull. And as you can see from this side too, lots of seam work to do in this housing area. Um, I think that this part would have been better if it had been designed just a little bit wider in the back here, but uh, we will take care of that with putty work. And I think I might, let me turn it this way. I might backfill putty on this one here where I'll be putting some putty back in here uh, and letting it come as close to the front as possible and then doing the rest of the work from the outside. We'll see how that goes. Well, things are starting to shape up. We have nacelles that are now attached to the ship. They have been glued in place and I put in some putty while I was attaching the cells just to kind of get some in there to get that initial puttying started because there is always quite a gap between the nacelle pylons and the secondary hull. So that's going to require a fair bit of cleanup in that area and even though we did shave down these areas those will also take some cleanup to get those to blend into this section really nicely where you're not really seeing that much so pylons are in place underneath here this is where the wiring is coming in from the pylons now i couldn't mark the ends of these with tape or anything with labels because they wouldn't go in through uh, and then figuring out which one is which is a little tricky once it's kind of installed into the ship. So what I did was there are six wires, two black, two red, two blue. So the first black, the first red, and the first blue to the front of the ship have the uh, sheathing removed on the ends of the wires. So I know which one is uh, corresponding to which part on the nacelles that way. And of course, I will label everything once things are running the way that they need to go. It's just that I couldn't label that while putting them through from the pylons into the secondary hall. But at least I know which one's which, and I will not get confused. Of course, I will test everything. So next up is to start getting the nacelles ready for installation. <laughs> Next thing I'm doing is getting the cells ready for lighting installation into onto the pylons. And the first step is to get the bizarre collector lenses ready to go. So what I've done is I have frosted the inside of each lens with some frosting material. And then I've added these frosted lighting gels on the back. And so they create a really nicely diffused look. 
so that the lighting inside produces the correct effect. Now, I'm not going to show you putting these into the ship right now because they are still curing up. They are uh, being secured onto the lighting gels with micro crystal clear so that I don't damage the uh, look of the clear plastic at all. But those are going to set up probably overnight and then tomorrow I will look at installing those into the nacelles. The other thing I need to do is to get these together enough so that I can drill the holes for the apertures I need for the lighting on the back of the nacelles for the flashers. It's really um, an interesting design choice for them to create these nacelles to split this way instead of splitting um, top and bottom. So you have to drill holes for the lighting between the two parts but you can't secure them together because then you need to be able to get the lighting in there and you can't really do that um, with them put together. So you have to temporarily secure them together well enough that you're actually going to be able to get a drill bit in there to clear that out but not permanently that you can't then reopen it to get everything installed. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. The front part is easier because the lighting goes through a solid piece that then gets installed into here. Although the fit of that piece is horrible and there's always a lot of uh, seam work to do around that little piece. So I have a little bit of work to do to get these nacelles ready to go for installation. I would love to be able to have them installed on the ship uh, with them lighted for a demo for the end of this update. I'm just not sure that that's reasonably going to happen, but we will see. And that's going to be all the time that we have for this update on the uh, what's going on on the bench at Canadian Starships this week. I really wanted to get that first Enterprise E with its nacelles on, but there is just going to be too much work in those nacelles, getting the lighting done, getting all the proper light diffusion and effects set up, that I really want to take my time with that stage, and there was just no way that I would cram that in before this update had to go. So, there is something for you to look forward in next week's update, getting the lighting into those nacelles and getting those nacelles fully installed onto the pylons. That's the stretch goal for next week. I hope that you've really enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.